All right, it's Monday, February 15th, 2021, and this is your weekly look at the latest Altos research data that came in over the weekend for the entire U.S. real estate market. Each week, Altos tracks every home for sale in the U.S., all the pricing, all the changes in pricing, the supply and demand, so that you can see those trends in the U.S. housing market before they become available through the traditional media channels. If you missed last week our monthly webinar, the replay is now available on the YouTube channel. We spent an hour looking at the details of this absolute crisis shortage of inventory that we're in. Uh, we looked at some of the local markets and we talked about what to expect for the coming year. So uh, go check that out. Uh, the recording is on the Altos Research YouTube channel if you missed it last week. Okay, the number one thing on everyone's mind, of course, is the active inventory crisis. Are buyers going to have any reprieve this year? With interest rates so low, and as a result, the su surprising levels of affordability, so Americans are buying everything in sight. The current active inventory of single family homes on the market stands at just 344,000 this week. That's down another couple percent from last week. Normally by mid-February, inventory levels have stopped uh, falling for the winter. And with some early new spring listings coming to market, uh, but demand not fully ramped up yet for the spring. So you can see here uh, in this chart that we're no normally in the trough of inventory uh, with um, you know, total availability going sideways for a few weeks before it starts to climb in early March. Uh, this year, however, demand never stopped over the winter, so we have no bottom on our inventory. This year, too, Tens of thousands of sales are happening so quickly that properties are spending essentially zero days on the active market, bypassing the active market data altogether, and they're like going directly into contract. Uh, in addition, the forbearance window has been pushed to 15 months, so it seems unlikely that we're going to see any new inventory from this group of people who are unable to pay their mortgages until at least June. Uh, it's just hard to see any scenario where we get any meaningful increase in inventory in the coming weeks. All the policy is focused at stimulating demand and no policymakers yet see the supply crisis that we're in right now. Price-wise, uh, the median single-family home price ticked up again this week to about uh, $345, $499. Um, Year-over-year price gains have been holding steady at around 10% for several months. Uh, last spring, prior to the first pandemic lockdown, the market was already super hot. Uh, so the weekly price gains right now are about the same as they were last year. Uh, that, that year over year increase will change next month as we had this price dip at, at, in, at the end of March and into April with the, the beginning of the, the pandemic lockdown last year. So this year, the year-over-year -year price gains will accelerate at the end of March for at least a, a you know, month or so. The median price of the newly listed cohort ticked up again this week also to 324 450 That's the uh, blue-gray green line here. Uh, remember, these are the properties, a cohort of properties newly listed in a given week. And it, and it gives us this terrific insight to market prices and then transaction prices several months in the future. So these are the ones that are coming to market each week. Uh, I suppose it is encouraging that these numbers aren't skyrocketing more. Uh, you know, they're just doing their expected weekly climb of the first and second quarter right now. Mildly encouraging in uh, this crazy market. 
So finally, though, this week, let's take a look at price reductions. As I pointed out recently, this is one of the stats where you can really see that home buyer demand is just unstoppable right now. Normally in February, we have our highest list ratio of, of new listings to old listings on the market. And the, the ones which have been sitting around for longer are the ones who are more likely to take a price reduction. So normally in mid-February, we have the fewest price reductions of the year. And like, uh, like the total inventory chart, this is usually moving sideways right about now. For years, we have instructed clients to use 35% as a rule of thumb normal for price reductions. So about 35% of homes take a price cut before they sell. The, the number, that number is, is usually higher in places like Texas and Arizona, where you usually have greater inventory per population than, you know, compared to, for example, California, where we have a chronic inventory shortage, not just this year, but last 40 years due to the state's frozen low property taxes. This is too, too good to hold on to your home. So right now, however, properties with price reductions is only 18%. So 35% might be normal. It's only 18% right now. And we're still falling every week. The highest February, the highest trough on this chart here was February of 2019. And that came after eight months of climbing mortgage rates over the whole year. So it slowed dramatic, uh, slowed demand uh, nationally pretty, pretty noticeably in the latter half of 2018. And, and you can see it in price reductions at the beginning of 2019. So this is what we're seeing right now. Rates are so low, de that demand is so high, properties are moving so fast that basically no one is taking a price cut. And, and I don't see how this one slows down either very soon. Uh, what are the conditions that might reverse this trend? Something that triggers weaker demand? Um, it seems unlikely that rates are going to, that mortgage rates are going to climb fast soon. Uh, all the policy, the only policy things in the pipeline are about stimulating greater demand. So for example, there's a home buyer tax credit, a first time home buyer tax credit um, designed to increase demand for first timers. So that the, you know, it's, it's funny, it's like, while I sympathize with you know the affordability, the down payment, the affordability things that the hurdles for younger buyers, it also feels like demand policy right now is a mistake in this moment. We need some supply policy, but the policymakers have yet to recognize really the crisis that we are in. So we're doing our job to help point it out to people. Uh, we need more supply, and it's probably not a bad thing if we let demand ease a bit. So that's the data for this week. As always, stay tuned to the YouTube channel. Subscribe here to the YouTube channel for the latest data every week. If you are a real estate professional and you work with buyers and sellers and need to communicate what's going on in this market right now, uh, go to altosresearch.com and just book a demo with us. You know, we'll show you how you can you know, really use the data in your business to help people, help buyers and sellers, help people understand what's going on. So many people asking the question, is now a good time? Should I, should I wait? Uh, you know, we, we can see some supply is low, but the demand is high. What does that mean for me? So that's what the data is for. That's how you communicate with your clients. So if you're a real estate professional, go to altosresearch.com, book a demo, have a conversation with us. We can, we can you know, show you how it works in your business. Uh, there is a link in the description below to altosresearch.com. Uh, as always, 
More next week. If things start changing, you'll see it here first. Love you.